welcome to my booktube channel the lock Booktician. and today what are we going to talk about today today we're going to continue on our journey on 10 days of black halloween and today is james baldwin appreciation day i hope you guys are ready for this because i am now that we have fixed the mood here with my little, I don't know if you can see those, these little things. I got a new light. I have a ring light and I am, this is going to be the video of me playing around and seeing where it's at. That just looks a little weird, but just know that it's on my head and that's where we're at. Okay, so a couple months ago, and it will definitely be a couple months ago when this video is published. I got just a small collection of James Baldwin work. I wanted to get all of the books before the filming of this beautiful video. However, I just didn't want to spend that much money. And as we all know, buying books can be uh, hard on the pockets. So I wanted to just get a few of them that I've been wanting for a while. There are a few people collections that I want to own. For example, I want to own all books by Giovanni, Maya Angelou, Toni Morrison, James Baldwin, N.K. Jemison, uh, Rupi Carr, um, Jumpa Lahari. Yeah, the list. The list goes on. I can't. Oh, Walter Mosley, of course. The list goes on. So I'm trying to slowly gather their work. I'm also wondering if I should just gather their work or the favorites of their work. So far, it's been collection of their work. Maya Angelou would be a feat because <laughs> whew, we know Maya Angelou has written a lot. So I want to be mindful. But my favorite book of Maya Angelou books is Me, Mom, and You or Mom, Me, and You. Something like that. That is my favorite of her books. We have James Baldwin here. For those of you who don't know James Baldwin, James Baldwin was a novelist, he wrote essays, he was a gay black man, and he is most famous for his ideologies on racism, race, black women, um, queer issues, different things he is known for. For Black Oweenathon, we will be reading Giovanni's room so definitely get you a copy of this if you haven't already I hope that by the time this video is posted you have you would have already had a copy of this but look at it it's not a big read so I'm hoping that we can get through this as a group for Black Oweenathon because I feel that everyone should be out here reading James Baldwin's work it is riveting, it's fantastic, and it always helps you think. The first book that I ever read by James Baldwin a couple years ago was James Baldwin, The Fire Next Time. I read this book in Peace Corps and I felt that it gave me insights to ideologies that I didn't think of or helped me understand ways in which our society is ran in comparison to racial injustices and I know that for me and my black experience I think about how I am situated in the world but specifically how I am situated in the United States of America and reading this book really made me think more introspectively and also allowed me a little glimpse on how other people perspectives play out. I'll read to you the back of this book because I am trying my best to not give away spoilers and I have realized that I tend to do that and I don't I just don't want to do that I just want to be like hey this is spoiler free without being like here are all my opinions on this one book so and also spoiling it at the same time it's like girl get it together anyway let's move on a national bestseller when it first appeared in 1963 the Fire Next Time galvanized the nation and gave passionate voice to the emerging civil rights movement. 
at once a powerful evocative of James Baldwin's early life in Harlem and a disturbing examination of the consequences of racial injustice. The Fire Next Time is an intensely personal and provocative document, which I will agree. I think that the words in this book is so commanding that you feel that you have to rush to action or it just makes you sit there for a while and think about the systems and how so many systems have so many consequences that I don't think we sit and think about. Okay, sorry, I went in again. It consists of two letters written on the occasion of the Continental of the Emancipation Proximation that exhorts Americans, both black and white, to attack the horrible legacy of racism. Described by the New York Times book review as sermon, ultimatum, confession, deposition, brilliant prose. Brilliant, oh, Baldwin's masterwork stands as a classic of literature as urgent today as when it was written. I have never heard true words. Definitely get you a copy of The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. Next we have James Baldwin, Giovanni Room. At this time of recording, I have not read this, but I'm hoping to have read it by the time this recording comes out. And I also am planning to do like a review of this book at the back end of this video and I hope that that happens. If not, it will be in a separate video. A young American in the 1950s, Paris, is waiting for his fiance to return from vacation in Spain. But when he meets Giovanni, a handsome Italian barman, the two men are drawn into an intense affair. After three months, David's fiance return and deny his true nature, David rejects Giovanni for a safe future as a married man. His decision eventually brings tragedy. Full of passion, regret, and longing, this story of a faded love triangle has become a landmark in gay writing, but its appeal is broader. James Baldwin caused outrage as a black author writing about white homosexuals, yet for him, the issues of race, sexuality, and personal freedom were eternally entwined. Audacious, remarkable, elegant, and courageous. Carol Phillips. I have been trying to read this book for some time now. I have a friend who kept putting this book on their Instagram stories and I was like, is that needs to be my next read? So I've been wanting to read this for a while and it was also one of the reasons why I wanted to do Black Oweenathon because I think that a lot of time we don't think about the intersectional identities of black writers and I wanted this book to be the book for Black Oweenathon. This is probably the thickest book of the rest of the James Baldwin books that I have. This book is 433 pages. You might be looking at it like, oh, it's been through some things. I think it has. This book I got used just like the other books from thriftbooks.com. I'll put the link to that in the description box. Another Country by James Baldwin, set in Greenwich Village, Harlem, Fran and France. Among other locales, Another Country is a novel of passion, sexual, racial, political, artistic that is stunning for its emotional intensity and haunting sensuality, depicting men and women, black and whites, stripped of their mass of gender and race by love and hatred at their most elemental elemental and sublime. I think that when you are looking up this book, I think you should go to Goodreads and read those reviews because some of them are, yep, they are touching the soul, I will say. If you go too deep, you might find something you don't want, but I think for the most part, I appreciated the reviews on Goodreads of this book, and I can't wait to read this as well. Also, we have The Amen's Corner. Now, I want to pause and be like, yes, I've read two of James Baldwin's book, but this video is pretty much me being like, hey, this is my TBR and what I plan to read 
of James Baldwin as of now. I do plan on picking up a couple more of his works and I've found that his books have been affordable for me to pick up on thrift books so definitely check thrift books out. Like I said earlier James Baldwin has also written plays so this is one of the plays. To his first work for the theater James Baldwin brought the messianic messianic to his first work for the theater, James Baldwin bought the messianic passion and majestic rhetoric of the storefront churches when he has preached as a boy in Harlem. But the Amen Corner is a, is but the Amen Corner is also infused with a critical awareness of the price that church demanded from its worshipers, even if it gave them a refuge from the world where black lives counted for nothing. I want to pause there that James Baldwin's work is very critical on their identity and their experiences and a lot of that is tied up with queerness and blackness. So I definitely think you should keep that in mind when you're seeking out his books that if you're looking for anything other than that you're not gonna get it and I'm here for it honestly and I think you should be too because diversifying your reading list and your TBR is very important. I think it helps you become a more well-rounded individual when you read stuff that are out of your norm or out of your scope of what you usually read. For years, Sister Margaret Alexander has moved her conjugation with a mixture of personal charisma and ferocious piety. But when her estranged husband, but when her estranged husband, Luke, a scapegrace jazz musician comes home to die. She is in danger of losing both her standing in the church and the son she has tried to keep on the godly path. The Amen Corner is a play about faith and family, about the gulf between men and women and fathers and sons. It is a scalding, uplifting, sorrowful, and exultant masterpiece of the modern American theater. Come on. I wish I had the skill set to be like, oh, I'm going to play each of these characters and like act it out for you, but I don't have that skill set. But I'm definitely going to try to imagine that I'm like each of the characters. And as I do like a quick skim, we definitely have our cast of characters. We have Margaret Alexander, as I've already said. We have Odessa, Ida Jackson. It's always Ida Jackson, especially in the South. We have Sister Moore, Sister Boxer, Brother Boxer, David, Luke, Sister Sally, Sister Douglas, Sister Rice, Brother Davis, Brother Washington, Woman, and, and other members of the congregation. Oh, yep, I'm ready for that. If Bill Street Could Talk, and this is also a movie, and this is also a book that I have been seeing on my friend's TBR. To be honest, if my friends are reading a book and I'm like, oh, what's that? I do tend to add it to my TBR as well. Going forward, we have in this honest and stunning novel, James Baldwin has given America a moving story of love in the face of injustice. Told through the eyes of Tish, a 19-year-old girl in love with Fani, a young sculptor who is the father of her child, Baldwin's story mixes the sweet and the sad. Tish and Fani have pledged to get married, but Fani is falsely accused of a terrible crime and in prison. Their family set out to clear his name as they face an uncertain future. The young lovers experience a kaleidoscope of emotions, affection, despair, and hope, and a love story that evokes the blues where passion and sadness are inevitably intertwined. Baldwin has created two characters so alive and profoundly realized that they are unforgettably ingrained in the American psyche. Wow. Yep. I'm ready. It's not like I wasn't ready before, but I'm ready. And when I found out it was a movie, I was like, sis, should you listen and watch that movie? And I was like, no, because it's going to ruin you. If you guys don't know me, 
you're gonna know me today and it's that if the book in the movie are not twins i'm talking about identical not that fraternal twins nonsense they keep putting on tv and trying to trick us and change the character or the character's race or the character's hair toenail color i'm looking at you divergent i'm looking at you but if they don't match i'm like mm, that's garbage and then i tend to not watch the movie or watch the book you know that vice versa thing so definitely this sounds interesting as well the last book i have for my james baldwin appreciation video and also a tbr video go tell it on the mountains and it's james baldwin go tell it on the mountain and i know that a lot of people have either read this book or it's also on their tbr as well i feel that the reviews that I've seen, I'm waiting on them to give us a movie. Give us a movie. So I'm ready for that. James Baldwin, first major work, Go Tell It on a Mountain, has established itself as an American classic. With lyrical precision, psychological directness, resonating symbolic power, and a rage that is once unrelenting and compassionate, Baldwin chronicles a 14 year old boy's discovery one saturday in march 1935 of the terms of his identity as the stepson of the minister of a stepfront pentecostal church in harlem baldwin's rendering of his protagonist's spiritual sexual and moral struggle of self-invention opened new possibilities in the American language and in the way Americans understand themselves. For example, Langston Hughes writes, he is thought provoking, tantalizing, irritating, abusing, and amusing. And he uses words as the sea uses waves to flow and beat, advance and retreat, rise and take a bow and disappearing. The thought becomes poetry and the poetry illuminates the thought. When I think about the work of James Baldwin and all the many books that I want to read by him, I am transformed, transcended into a place where I think that the American English language is transformed. Toni Morrison speaks about the way in which James Baldwin articulated himself, the way he transformed the English language. I believe it very much to be so because reading The Fire Next Time, that was the first book I ever read of his work, I felt that I was being commanded through the words. It was poetic. It was stirring up emotions in me that I, at the time, didn't want to realize but was forced to reckon with. And I think that we definitely lost a gem, but now he's an ancestor and we still have his legacy to continue to move forward. There is a lot of messages that are being misconstrued out here in the world. And I think there's a lot of things that we aren't digesting or reflecting on because we're in this quick gratification kind of culture. We're in this cancel culture where can be toxic, but also necessary. James Baldwin work can help you tease through that right tease and see what information that i am receiving that is helpful and that's going to make me a more reflective person and understand how intersectional identities can impact a system i can go on and on and on and on and on and on and on and, on and, on and talk about james baldwin but i just want to collect my books again and show you again and I, like I say, even though this one, you know, going through a struggle compared to the others, I'm still here for it. This book was loved. Wherever it was before me, it was loved. It was read several times. It was consumed. So I'm not going to be upset on the condition of this book. And again, we have here, go tell it on the mountain if Bill Street could talk. The Amen Corner another country 
Giovanni's room and the fire next time. Every time I see the Amen corner, I keep thinking Amen's corner <laughs> and, and trying to remove the and put apostrophe S. But that's where I'm at. Sometimes I'm not able to read things properly and I have to like really take my time or like really act it out and really get into it. Let me know if any of these books apart from Giovanni's Room, hey it's here, apart from Giovanni's Room that you plan on reading. I definitely want to know what books you have read by him. Can you maybe give me maybe a sentence or two about how you felt about the book that you've read? Do you even like James Baldwin? Have you ever thought about adding him or his work to your TBR? If so, this is your chance. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for participating in 10 Days of Black Halloween and also the Black Oweenathon. Don't forget to tag me in things. Black Oweenathon has a Twitter account. So definitely add, you know, however you do it. <laughs> please do that as well. Have a wonderful day and thank you so much for joining and tuning in. Bye!